on this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV. There's all kinds of mushrooms in here, especially in the summertime. A couple days after a good rainfall, they start to grow and, and they'll, they'll last about, um, depending on species, anywhere from a couple days to a week or two before they start to deteriorate. Found some chanchos. Right, what we got here, we have bagged the elusive chanterelle mushroom. Not really so elusive, but uh, very good to eat. Once we got them going in there, we cook them until they get a little tender. Closed captioning is brought to you by Global Outdoors. Find your next adventure and share your experiences with others by downloading the Global Outdoors mobile app or visiting globaloutdoors.com. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacop. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure sportsmanship, and heritage that make us buy you wild. This is the Pearl River Wildlife Management Area, located at the toe of Louisiana's boot near Slidell. The area is over 35,000 acres of mixed hardwoods, cypress tupelo swamp, and marsh, which create a diverse habitat for a variety of birds, wildlife, and vegetation. Its namesake, the Pearl River, forms the land's eastern border and also collects over 60 inches of annual rainfall, creating regular flooding. These highly saturated swamp bottoms are the focus of today's Bayou Wild Adventure. Hey, we're in the Pearl River Wildlife Management Area, just a little bit north of Slidell, on our first mushroom hunt. Is it a hunt? Is it a forage? We're gonna find out. Yeah, we'll do that. Mushrooms are excellent uh, for camera work, too. They're unlike those ducks and rabbits and squirrels that run away from you. It's the only thing Mushroom you can hunt just without a heartbeat. Mushroom just sits there and says, yeah, take my picture. <laughs> <laughs> and they grow pretty quickly, too. Yeah, they do. Let's go get them. All right. There's all kinds of mushrooms in here, especially in the summertime. A couple days after a good rainfall, they start to grow and, and they'll, they'll last about, um, depending on species, anywhere from a couple days to a week or two before they start to deteriorate. Found some chanchos. Coming up, foraging for mushrooms on the North Shore. In Louisiana, we live to cook. And we know a little Louisiana flavor brings any meal to life. Whether it's Friday's fish fry or Tuesday's crispy chicken, with Louisiana fish fry, you can turn any meal into a bona fide family favorite. Let's all Louisiana. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. An incredible six and a half minutes. That's all it takes for a raging boil and perfect seafood with a high performance cooker done with special tunnel tubes increasing three times the surface area of the high performance pot. And what that means to seafood lovers like you and me is less fuel burn, more time to socialize, and most of all, better quality boiled seafood. Go to HBCookers.com and find a retailer near you. Use discount code 5OUTDOORS and save on your high-performance cooker. That's hpcookers.com, discount code 5OUTDOORS.
There's all kinds of mushrooms in here, especially in the summertime. They, they start to grow and, and they'll, they'll last about, um, depending on species, anywhere from a couple days to a week or two before they start to deteriorate. Um, but you can see there's mushrooms of all different stages in here. Um, these two are just about ready to drop uh, what they call spores. So down underneath the mushroom, you have the, uh, the gills. And these are where the spores come out. These, those are basically like mushroom seeds. Right. So uh, as the mushroom comes out the ground, first it starts as like a little ball, and then it'll open up. And once it gets to about this stage where the cap is just about all the way open, it'll drop those spores. And that allows the mycelium, which is the main um, part of the organism underground, to continue to spread. It's got a little bit of a mushroom smell to it. They kind of, they, they, most, most of them kind of all smell the same. But, uh, I've always been interested in, in all the things you can find in the outdoors, but um, a few years ago I kind of um, decided to get back in the outdoors and kind of poke around and uh, realized there were a lot of things, uh, a lot of resources available here in the, you know, the South Louisiana woods. So I uh, started kind of just walking around and every time I would see mushrooms, I'd take a picture and kind of go online and do a little bit of research and try to figure out what they were. This is one of the lookalikes we have here in South Louisiana. These are mistaken for chanterelles fairly often. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing you, you can tell, this is about as big as they get, about an inch in diameter maybe at the most. But they end up, they end up shaped just like a chanterelle and they are basically the same color. Um, but the way you can tell they're not chanterelles is they have uh, what's called uh, true gills. So the gills are little flaps that'll, that'll come off if you rub them. Um, chanterelles have uh, ridges instead of gills. Up until today, my mushroom foraging experience was pretty limited. Uh, oyster mushrooms I identify. I find those a lot of times on willow trees along the edges of canals and bayous. They're easy to identify. But like most people, I'm a little squeamish and a little leery about mushrooms that I don't know whether they're safe or not. And today we met with Andre LaFleur, and he's not what you'd call a mycologist, but he knows an awful lot about mushrooms. And we learned a lot today about scrounging and foraging in the, in the woods to try to find those that are edible and those that you need to leave alone. Martha, we found some chanterelles. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference. You can see it looks kind of like that little one we yeah, found earlier. But it gets more like ruffled. But it's much bigger and um, see these are the, these are the ridges. Sometimes on bigger ones you can see um, there's little veins that go uh, across the ridges as well. And that's not a feature most mushrooms but have. So that's. Are these little ones also chanterelles? Yeah. So okay. those are young. Th these are in the pen stage. Okay. These are coming up, and probably in another um, two or three days they'll be like this. So we need to pick that maybe one. Even, that maybe one. even sooner. It's been raining a lot lately, and apparently that's good for mushroom development. They've got a very short lifespan, this one, from what I've learned. So if you're in the right place at the right time, you'll find them in the right phase. Uh, you don't want to find them too waterlogged or dirty or buggy. But if they look clean and they look like they just bloomed, then they're probably the right one for you. Yeah, so I'll take them and um, put them in some water and I just kind of lightly kind of shake them mm -hmm. and then transfer them to another clean bowl of water and do that maybe two or three times. These here are the chanterelle mushrooms that people are always talking about eating. So these are mature. They've been here a few days. They're a little dirty, but they're definitely edible. These are the larger ones. So we're going to pick this one. Unlike frogs, they don't jump out. <laughs> there are various field guides out there. Um, the Peterson Field Guide, the National Audubon Society Guide. There's also apps like um, iNaturalist and um, their partner app Seek, which are um, identification apps. You can take a picture and load it into the app and it'll give you a fairly good guesstimation of the species. Uh, it won't always be 100%, but right. it, it'll help you get there.
Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. Delta Marina is Plaquemines Parish fishing one-stop. Get live bait, fuel, ice, tackle, and marine supplies. Then launch into the world's most productive saltwater fishing. Return to the fishing cleaning station, relax in first-class cabins overlooking the bayou, all in Delta Marina's safety video monitored parking lot. Need a fishing charter guide? Delta Marina can hook you up. Cook your catch in your kitchenette or dine in the upstairs restaurant. Visit Delta Marina for a day or a week. Stop in just off Highway 11 down Rosemary Drive in Empire. Visit the deltamarina.com. One of the reasons why Double D has been around for 50 years is because we are consistent with what built the business. And we go to great lengths to make sure that when you bring a deer or a hog or whatever it may be, your meat stays your meat all the way through the process. But we want to be as true to the original intent, which is a local meat company. And, and that's something that we want to maintain for as long as the Lord lets us do it. Continuing this week's episode, we're in the Pearl River Wildlife Management Area on a different kind of hunt. That's a Ganoderma species. You ever heard of uh, Rishi mushrooms? This outdoorsman is our teacher for today as we forage for wild mushrooms. I grew up uh, in north of Lafayette amongst cane fields and spent a lot of my time and as my childhood um, just kind of exploring around the house in my backyard, um, taking note of all the various uh, things to find. I spent a lot of my time outdoors, um, and we had a camp in the basin as a kid uh, as well. We did a little duck hunting out there. Um, so I've always, I've always just had an um, appreciation for the outdoors, and um, it's, just, it's just awesome to be able to go out and, and find things that you can utilize. middle of the Pearl River Wildlife Management Area located a little bit north of Slidell here today and we're hunting mushrooms, getting some education about mushrooms and looking for those tasty chanterelles. I started kind of just walking around and every time I would see mushrooms I'd take a picture and kind of go online and do a little bit of research and try to figure out what they were. I found some chanterelles. They're up a little higher up. So you think this is a chanterelle? I do. Let's tell me tell me what you what you notice about it. The other orange ones we found had thinner gills and these have more ones that kind of splay out and they don't, they're not as flaky, they're holding together better. Yeah. And it's got that kind of like scalloped wow. mm -hmm. edge. Just check out the key identifying factors and, and just make note of those and, and, and keep those in mind when you're, when you're out looking. Fortunately, most of the uh, choice edible mushrooms here um, don't have very many imposters and they're pretty easy to identify, so. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. This is a really good little patch of mushrooms here. Yeah. See? They're like trumpeted. 
see those little uh, those little lines that go sideways yeah, they're not in between the uniform. gills. Yeah, and then if you tear them apart, they're nice and white inside. When they start to split like this yeah. on the edges, that's when you can tell they're getting a little old. So if you find one that's nice and smooth around the, around the edge, you, you got a span of a good couple days after they come out for them to be and nice and nice do you and perfect. Till they, uh, you know, you want to obviously cook them right away, but you know, so you want. Yeah, if you wash and rinse them at home and then uh, and then dry them out, uh, like on a nice on a nice drying rack, they'll they'll last a few days in the fridge. It's pretty easy to come out with a lot, but I don't really tip, I typically don't take more than I can use. Make money off of them. Oh yeah, they bring them to the restaurants. There's a special on, I don't know if it's Amazon, one of the streaming sites that's like six Ooh. random jobs that people have for uh -huh. close enough. I wonder if you could dehydrate them. Yeah, I dehydrate them all the time. Um, they dehydrate pretty well. Um, they don't, when you rehydrate them, they're not very um, pleasant to eat. Yeah. But I use them to make like mushroom stock. I've also um, just pulverized them into like a powder. Umami? Make like a little, yeah, a little mushroom powder garnish. Coming up next. We break out the folding table and camping stove for an on-the-spot wild mushroom cooking demonstration. My favorite way is very simple. Uh, I'd love just a, just a quick saute in butter, uh, maybe with a little bit of garlic for extra flavor, but just I like to just taste the mushrooms on their own. Make a so good topping a nice, for something. Yeah, like a little mushroom toast or top it on steak or chicken. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. We're in our new season of Bayou Wild TV, and that means new merchandise. Head on over to bayouwildtv.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and performance shirts, featuring scenes taken directly from our shows. In Louisiana, we live to cook. And we know a little Louisiana flavor brings any meal to life. Whether it's Friday's fish fry or Tuesday's crispy chicken, with Louisiana fish fry, you can turn any meal into a bona fide family favorite. Let's all Louisiana. All right, so we came from the woods with our chanterelle mushrooms, got them all cleaned up. Andre, uh, what's involved in cleaning them up? So you want to just get some couple bowls of water throw them in there and just kind of, you know, agitate them, get that uh, that loose dirt off and then mm -hmm. switch them to the new water, do it again, do that about two or three times. And then, uh, you know, lay them out on some paper towel or a little drying rack mm -hmm. and uh, just try to let them kind of air dry a little bit and get, the, get some of that moisture out of there. Then you want to take them and uh, just kind of tear them apart. It's a good way to check for bugs inside. Sometimes you'll get some little snails and little mm -hmm. bugs in there and stuff. So it's a good way to check and make sure you have those in there. Ours, luckily, today were all really nice. Yeah, ready get to some go. butter going. Looks like it's about ready. Yeah, well, I need to get this butter. It's starting to brown starting up. To brown, and then yeah. what I want to put in here is some of this uh, garlic here, this minced garlic. We'll get a little bit of that in there. Get that going. We can go ahead and put the mushrooms in. Also brought some of our, one of our favorite seasonings, the Uncle Larry's we brought. We don't want to put too much 
because you want to enjoy the natural flavor of the chanterelles. Once we got them going in there, we cook them until they get a little tender. You really want to make sure you cook uh, wild mushrooms all the way through. They can give you a little bit of an upset stomach in some people if you don't do that. And as far as making sure you've got good edible, of course chanterelles are pretty much very tasty, but there's some that are edible, don't quite have the flavor. How can you be safe that you're not getting something that could really make you sick or even worse? Well, with chanterelles, you want to look and make sure that you have a, a bright yellow mushroom with ridges and not gills. So you want to make sure that they, the underside doesn't have the, uh, the little gill flaps that just break off when you rub them. These are just part of the mushroom, the ridges. You can also see sometimes you have little uh, veins that run across perpendicular to the mushroom. To, to the ridges. Uh, other than that, you wanted them to have a creamy white inside, and when you tear them apart, you want it to be kind of like, they come apart kind of like string cheese. Chanterelles start coming out um, like early, early summer, late spring, if, it, if we got a really hot spring. Basically once the temps uh, get above about 85. And then what we're gonna do now that we got them kind of wilted and Ready to go, we got some of this great heavy whipping cream, and this is going to be the coup de gras. And we're going to let this cook down a little bit. Let's get our temperature back up, get it nice and rolling. Got it all simmered down, got our mushrooms uh, very nice and coated with this nice creamy sauce. And the best thing to do is get you a piece of toast or a cracker like this and put some of that gravy on it and scoop you some of the mushrooms. And have at it. There you go. Chanterelles. Pearl River Wildlife Management Area. What up? An incredible six and a half minutes. That's all it takes for a raging boil and perfect seafood with a high performance cooker. Done with special tunnel tubes, increasing three times the surface area of the high performance pot. And what that means to seafood lovers like you and me is less fuel burn, more time to socialize, and most of all, better quality boiled seafood. Go to hbcookers.com and find a retailer near you. Use discount code 5OUTDOORS and save on your high performance cooker. That's hpcookers.com, discount code 5OUTDOORS. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Do you want to make sure you're doing things right when boating in Louisiana? Make sure every occupant in your vessel is wearing the right type and size life jacket before leaving the dock. Size information for the intended wearer can be found on the information panel. Make sure you stay safely to the right side of the waterway when you're operating in a narrow channel. Always choose to go right when it is safe and practical. Make sure you're operating at the right speed for the given conditions every time you're boating. Just because your boat can safely travel at higher speeds in perfect conditions doesn't mean it should in a chop or when encountering other wakes or maneuvers. In Louisiana, the best way to make sure that you're doing things the right way on the water is by attending and completing one of our boating safety education courses. Learn more and book a course at www.wlf.la.gov. These NASBA approved courses are statistically proven to save lives. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing.
When it comes to doing your thing on Louisiana waters, do the right thing. Today's trip is a reminder that Louisiana's bounties go beyond the fish and game we often pursue. Wild foraging brings a little more awareness to the species that grow from Mother Nature. I'm not a huge mushroom enthusiast. I uh, never really cared for them very much with food, but I'm kind of trying to uh, grow my palate a little bit and try new things. My mom is a mushroom forager up in Vermont, and she gets so excited when she talks about specific finds, and I'm just like, okay, that's cool, Mom. So she'll appreciate this. Um, and after cooking them fresh from the ground, I definitely think I could do it again. But the central lesson to bring home from this trip is the importance of proper research and identification when it comes to consuming wild mushrooms. Uh, just familiarize yourself with uh, like the parts of the mushroom uh, and, and different types. Um, you, can, you can look and see what kind are um, available in your, in your local area. And um, just check out the key identifying factors. And, and just make note of those and, and, and keep those in mind when you're, when you're out looking. If you're planning on going out and, and foraging for mushrooms, a couple things you need to know. First of all, places you can and can't go. State wildlife management areas are okay with it. You can go in there year round. Remember, you do have to have your WMA permit or a proper license that will allow you to have access to the WMAs. Any of the federal national wildlife refuges, I'm talking about Bayou Tesh, uh, maybe Big Branch Marsh, uh, Boga Chitta, all of those do not allow you to remove anything from there. So that's a place that you need to stay away from. Other places, maybe your own hunting lease. A lot of times I used to walk by and never paid attention to them. But once you know what you're looking for and you start looking for mushrooms, you'll find them in a lot of places. We thank Andre for introducing us to his world of foraging and sharing with us the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage of Bayou Wild.